I'm sitting on probably ooh, three meters of peat at the moment, and if I jump up and down, everything starts to move slightly. Oh, lovely! What a superb! A fen is different from a bog. It's different from a mire. Fens officially are peat generating, and peat, I mean this sort of thing, peat generating wetlands, which have at least half a metre of peat deposited, and they're supplied by base rich waters from usually the ground. Fens are peculiar because the water flow is in the top surface, just about that much. There's almost nothing below here. This has got all the oxygen in, all the life is in this bit here. Everything below that's been preserved. The roots, plant tops, anything that's fallen in, dead bodies, doesn't matter, just preserves it. My involvement at Marley Fen here is to look at the peak core. And what we're doing there is to try and reconstruct the paleo um, environments over the last um, post-glacial period. Through the pollen record, we're tracking the changes in the environment, so how it's warmed and cooled at different periods, how there's been times of erosion, how humans have come into the landscape and eroded the landscape, or have ploughed the landscape and planted cereals. And we can tell all this from the pollen record that's held within the peat. When you do an investigation into the geology, you put boreholes down and you observe what comes up and you measure the depth and then you can record the geological layers. The further back in time you go, the deeper the sediment is. So the oldest sediment from about 12,000 years ago is found at the very bottom of our core and the present day material is being laid down at the surface today. So we actually at this site have a continuous record of about 11 to 12,000 years of peat accumulation. All around us at the moment, we have pollen being generated. That falls into the fen, gets preserved in layers. And then you have different tree species, different years. So you can tell when the elms came into England, when they declined, when the lime came here, when the lime was removed, the lime trees. And then with everything else, you can look at the amount of calcium, in terms of calcium carbonate, the amount of silica, the amount of water, the amount of carbon. And all these things, if you put them together, give you a snapshot of what was happening at this location, literally at this location, 5,000 years ago, 8,000 years ago. The vegetation surrounding the fen would have been quite different um, if we went back to the past. If we were able to sit here 11,000 years ago, we would be in a, a completely different landscape, but there would still have been accumulation of peat materials at this site. We live in a sterile environment where we don't need the fuel we don't need the shelter, we don't need the reed from these fens anymore. We have fossil fuels to replace them. Do we allow this to erode and disappear? Once the life here disappears, if we lose a species, a plant or an animal, unless it flies or it crawls fast, it won't get back here again. So it's gone forever. It is a historic archive of information, which we can analyse now, but in the future we may be able to analyse in a different way and their dynamic systems. This fen is developing as we're sitting here. It's doing its bit. We live and we think, and we can think back a week, a day, a month, a year. This fen doesn't care about that time scale. You have loads of fun in the fen, absolutely. You get wet and you get muddy and you get bitten, who cares?